it's now my great honor to present our next presenter. Oh, I'm sorry, that's me, uh, Eric Pepper. And as many of you know, I'm a professor of holistic health at San Francisco State. And my interest is really ways to optimize health, illness prevention, how posture and breath may affect it over the last many years, ways by which we can stay healthy while working in a digital world. And in true sense, at this moment, I am truly, you know, jumping with joy because our book, yay, has just been published. As all of you know, there's a major shift from working at the office to home. This is a shift that has been occurring much earlier and just escalated rapidly with COVID-19. We used to work at home, you know, or we used to work in the office and we had friends together, colleagues, we could talk to them. And now we tend to work more singularly. And the only communication, socialization, work, education, dating is often initially done only online. Imagine working like this hour or hours after hours or different ways. And by the end of the day, you're exhausted and tired. Or we sit in funny body positions. We don't take time. We can do it anywhere. And even now, if it is possible to go to the beach and some parks have been closed, then even there, you're you bringing your cell phone or tablet. You may be working, but definitely you're texting or chatting back and forth or just checking, oops, what is happening on Facebook, uh, you know, Instagram, etc. And we do this everywhere the whole time. And we totally don't know that we are collapsing just like this, that our head is forward, that we are captured by the screens. And so the question I would ask all of you for a moment, what do you experience as you work in front of the screen? Just for a moment, if it is okay, write down in the, tech, in the chat box what you experience. Don't hit return yet. Just for a moment, type what is your experience? Do you have neck and shoulder discomfort? Do you feel tired? You're excited? I know. It depends what you're doing. And still, by the end of the day, what do you experience? Just type it in for a moment. So in a sense of being isolated, it feels like time has taken a different meaning. That's absolutely true. We start, we work, and we can work at our own time, which is both an advantage, remarkably so. But for some, there's no more transition between the place we do work, we do socializing, and there's no ritual. And so in many ways, for many people, developing ritual is one way to develop sanity. That means if you used to go to work at nine o'clock in the morning, do something like that now. Make it a, literally a timesheet. This is when I work, do a ritual. I wear different clothing. I know, we all wanna wear uh, you know, easy clothing while working. I recommend that, wear work clothing. It is a cue by which we can really activate our body and mind to be together. Be like the athletes or, 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 or actors. You know, they have, they wear clothing which makes the role and the clothing also activates them to perform better. You probably heard a sound popping in, which you may have heard, which is a signal to me that you have been sitting much too long and or I have been sitting much too long. So for a moment, what I'd like you all to do is just stand up. All of you get up. I mean, I'm sorry, I can't see all of you, but just stand up, really stand. And now what I'd like you to do is just reach up to the ceiling, really reach up. Imagine you're picking fruits or even better, imagine you're picking lovely flowers. Well, and then there's one on the other ground. Pick that one too. Make a great bunch of flowers, a bouquet. Now look at that bouquet. And then in your imagination, give it to a friend of yours. And now just sit down again. And as you sit down for a moment, lean back. Let your eyes be closed. 
Let your hands be against your abdomen, your stomach. And now take a gentle breath so your stomach gets larger. Let the air come in your nose when you inhale. And now when you exhale, let the air just flow out very easily. And now bring your right hand to your left shoulder. And as you inhale, let your stomach still get bigger. And as you exhale, stroke your arm, your hand from the shoulder down to your hand. I'm making a sound with my mouth to let the air, so you can hear the air. However, let the air flow in and out through your nose. Do that again. And now bring your left hand to your shoulder, right shoulder. And again, stroke right down as you exhale. One more time. And now put both hands on your hips. Let the air come in your abdomen and stomach. And now as you exhale, stroke your hands down your hips, down your legs to your feet as you bend forward. And come up. And repeat it a second time. And now open your eyes. And just check. How do you feel now? Do you feel worse? Do you feel better? How many noted that in a way as you did this afterwards, you felt a bit more relaxed. And if yes, nod your head up and down. Great. Notice it didn't last long, but for a moment we did some movement. We interrupt the static position. The more we can do that while we're working in front of screens, including cell phones, tablets, watching Netflix or series, streaming movies, the more we interrupt, the more do we find we have more energy during the day. It's so easy to say, it's so challenging to do. For that, I use a reminder program I'll go back over later. Just like what many of you, you have Zoom fatigue, you have neck and shoulder discomfort, eye irritations, and if you're younger, you get problems with vision, especially myopia, you may have back pain, you get tired, exhausted, low energy, difficulty sleeping, especially when you look at the screens just before going to sleep because they inhibit the, the melatonin production that occurs naturally in the body. Moreover, when I'm watching streaming videos with excitement, my brain is woken up and it means I'm more activated, sleep is more difficult. So one simple rule literally is to interrupt or stop watching screens about 45 minutes before going to bed. You know, just be quiet, listen to music, do some other tasks. And then we often get so addicted every few minutes, I need to check my cell phone. Ah, I wonder what my friends are doing. And our attention is more challenged, all the multitasking. And at the end, we may even feel more depressed or have anxiety. These are the most common ones. And even our attention is, is suffering. We, it feels like we're doing more, but we're doing semi-tasking. That means doing twice as much, half as well. Really, this is a, a great analogy we wrote up in our book, and many of these concepts are in our book, which is essentially a scuba diving analogy. So here you're focusing, you start, you start attending to your task. You're working without interruptions. You get your task done. And then finally, at an appropriate place, you come right back up. Now, however, we start diving into our work. Ah, oh, I get a notification for email. I better check that. I leave the task. I come back. 
I need to dive down again. It takes time to get there. I get another notification. And notice just like in scuba diving, there's a time it takes for compression and decompression. So in fact, multitasking is often much less efficient. One of the great tools to avoid Zoom fatigue or any of these is start structuring our lives. It's so easy to say, by the way. But I would really recommend that means schedule a time when you do concentrated work or studying, it makes a difference, without interruptions. Put a notice up. I answer emails between 2 and 4 in the afternoon. I'm not available for telephone calls between 9 and 12, unless it is truly an emergency. Obviously, emergencies are critical. But if you have too many emergencies, you don't have emergencies. You have life habits. <laughs> and I remember vividly once being a consultant for a physician who said, when we tried to say that to him, to take breaks and all that stuff, and to eat lunch, he said, I can't do that. You know, what happens is I can't. By the time it's lunchtime, there's still people in the waiting room. And I carry that through lunch. I really was deeply respectful for his concern, for caring for patients. But I looked at him and said, if that happens once or once a week, I understand. During crises, we must pool up our resources. However, if this is, but this happens all the time. This is not crises. This is habit pattern. It means you need to re-change your time schedule, possibly a half an hour before lunch. You do not schedule any clients or patients. And that is the time for overflow. There are ways to solve it. Multitasking really is useful to think of that. Anyway, by the end, we may feel like this or like that. It's not uncommon. And now I want to talk, and when we now look at children, we see that they're even more addicted to screens. Here's how we socialize. And I'm not being totally negative because we may be sharing the pictures with each other, we, except that we should be six feet apart at this moment with masks on and we can't see all the social cues. Uh, but if you look around, this is children looking and they're looking like this. And they're just captured by the screen, just like we are often captured by the screen when we're working, we get one more notification and we check that and we go down this rabbit hole of link to link to link. And for children, in many ways, this is a disaster. Here, they're all looking very closely at the screen. Keep this in mind. You can look at the posture, look at the arousal, the shoulders almost up, the kind of excitement. There's nothing wrong with being excited. The challenge is staying that way for long time periods without doing the appropriate physical movement and activity that would dissipate the sympathetic arousal. And the eyes only focus nearby. The result in children, as many of you know, they have near vision stress. And if you live in Singapore, 80% almost of, of all young people now wear glasses because by looking your whole life so close or at a wall, your eyes really do change. You're immobilized the whole time. You know, when you collapse, you compress your abdomen, it affects digestion, it affects breathing, you are more sympathetically activated, and the data is quite good. That is an increased risk for obesity and diabetes and attention deficit disorder. On the other hand, when you're upright and play outside, we have the opposite health response we become more healthy. A question from Jennifer. Yes. So she's asking, is there an optimal amount of time? Because too much time, I would imagine, would not be good either. There needs to be a certain level of engagement in the task, right? Yes. So a super, thank you for the question. It's a very critical one. The question really is, when do we need to do the interruptions? How much time? When you're working, there are really two components. One. I would say every 15 or 20 minutes, get up and move. Wiggle, move, dance, it makes a difference. Set a program that reminds you, that's one. Two, learn while working to breathe lower, to reduce that kind of excessive arousal 
and be sure you can check that your shoulders are relaxed and that you're sitting in the right optimum ergonomic position. And you can do this even with little micro breaks. When my hands are on the computer, on the keyboard, not the computer, but often the laptop, without knowing, I hold tension in my forearms and shoulders. I am not aware of that, not at all. And yet, when I drop my hands to the lap, to my lap, then the tension can dissipate. I'll show that in a moment. Thank you. Okay, if you go back to the children, and they are no different than adults. Here's the young boy playing. You can see on this graph, the muscle tension is in his shoulder. Take a look, it stays up. In his arm, it stays up. That makes good sense because he has to use the controller. Look, he's breathing much more rapidly. You know, I and mean, then people who breathe rapidly and shallowly are, are slightly more at risk sometimes for anxieties as well. And an increased tension in the shoulders the whole time leads to neck and shoulder discomfort. They just don't do it for those few minutes we record. When we record them for 20 minutes, like on this one, you can see the same data. Okay. The challenge is we start from here. In our evolutionary perspective, which we also describe in the book, and we end up over here, where all we only live in our head. And I'm not totally exaggerating, versus alternating between working here and doing dynamic movement. And also, we have the social isolation. When we look at indigenous people, they live in groups. Look at this, the San people, the Bushmen, Botswana. They're communicating. And here, we now become socially isolated. And the first, or the, the biggest risk for illness is social isolation. And you can see this, and then our lifestyle becomes 24 seven. We go to bed and we still imagine our cell phones that we're talking to it on that picture. Okay. And I have a question here, which I will do and I'll stop sharing for a moment so I can look at all of you. That will make it much better. When you are with others and all of a sudden you or them get a notification on your cell phone and you look at that. What happens? How does it make you feel? Just write that in the chat box for a second. Don't hit return yet. Just write in the chat box. And now hit return. So we can all, if we want to, we can all see and look and share. You're annoyed you know, anxious. I feel like I'm di being disconnected. Yes, all the, there are many others as well. Correct, disregarded. And notice how it breaks that social contract we have with others. You know, we, you know, when lovers are together, we are totally engaged, hopefully, when you meet somebody in caring. And now what we're doing in the middle of something like that, we check our cell phone and we feel dismissed. The question is, are we equally guilty of that? Do we do that just as much? And if we do, it will break social connections or reduce it. You know, institute policies in your home that over dinner time, the cell phones, the, all the messages are put to the side. They are put in a box. So you, so you are choosing or you set the, the opportunity to at least connect in actuality. Okay, let me keep going for a moment more. And finally, I'll, do, I'll go back one more to sharing the screen for an instant here. And here you can see in the same way from our evolutionary perspective, we started as hunting and gatherers at some place and now we all end up sitting and sitting and sitting, as I've said earlier in the, in the presentation. And we are more and more distracted by looking at our cell phone as well. And you can see that the pedestrian in accidents and death rates as well have radically increased since we got access to the iPhone. It's because all we do is we look at the screen and we lose our perception of the periphery. So why do we have Zoom fatigue? Very summary, 
And then I'll go to the solutions and I'm trying to put those in place as well. One, stress factors are amplified by COVID-19, you know that. We're connected 24 hours a day. The most important part we often forget is that it triggers automatic responses in us. I call those evolutionary traps. When a stimuli occurs, a visual stimuli occurs, without awareness, you react to it. Now, why do you do that? Well, most likely because in our evolution, when we were walking through the jungle, through the savanna, wherever we were, if I were aware of a change in the sight, in the periphery, and I'll stop sharing here. If I were looking at this, you know, walking and walking, and then I'm, I became aware of, of something in the periphery, I need to attend to that. It could be danger, it could be food, so it could be friends or foe. But I, my sister, to survive, I needed to react. We do the same reaction still to every notification. And that leads to that very quick addiction and why we keep doing it. At the same time as we look, we become more vigilant. We hold our breath for a moment. We shallow breathe. We freeze. We may stare. I want to look because if I blink, I'll, I won't see what's going on. And all the time, we're really not connected to our bodies because, you know, we don't know that we are reacting this way. We have really a kind of, and then we sit all the time, a sitting disease. One of the major pieces that occurs without awareness is the kind of near visual stress. As I look at the screen, which I am doing, well, just all of you just do that. Bring your head almost really focus on the screen. At this moment, really focus on the screen. Try to look at the smallest print, really, or the smallest item and the curling of my hair. Really see how many curly hairs I have or something like that. Really look at that. Concentrate hard. And as you're doing that, you may notice your eyes open up a little bit. You have a little neck and shoulder tension. You may even have held your breath and you, if you, and you forget to blink. And as you keep doing that, you may even have noticed your eyes have become a bit dry. All that occurs automatically. The way to solve that is I look at the far distance. I relax my eyes looking at the horizon. If I look at the horizon, my eyes automatically diverge. And the, the lens can flatten again, the muscles relax, and can relax the eyes. That does not occur when I look at the screen like this. But there are other factors as well. We have poor ergonomics, we lack training and coaching, and we really have forgotten that we have an evolutionary background. Okay. Uh, let me I think I'm going to skip these all. I have many, many slides. Uh, so what I want to do for a moment is just end the experience, subject, the negative descriptions with a little experience many of you may have done. What I'd like you to do is take, is take an object like your mouse and put it into your hand, into your hand you normally mouse with, put it to the next, to the side of the screen. next to the keyboard, not to the side of the screen, put it to the side of the keyboard, your mouse. And in a moment, I'm going to ask you to draw the letters of your street address. However, starting the last letter of the street address and then go backwards. And after you drew the letter, you click and then you draw the next letter. For example, if my street address is Derby Street, then the first letter I would draw with the mouse is the letter T. Then I would click. Then I would draw the letter E. But the major piece, what you're going to do when you do this task, is to draw the letters very small, only about a half inch uh, doing this. Just a half inch. Very small. Are you ready to do it? Just nod your head if you're ready. Yes? Do it right now. Begin. Really do it as quickly as possible. Don't make any mistakes. Quicker and quicker. Quicker and quicker. 
I think that's enough. How many of you observed that you held your breath? How many observed that you tightened your shoulders slightly? How many observed your whole trunk even tightened? Your whole body stiffened? You almost froze in place. We do this so often and all the time. We forget. And I should, what we end up doing when we sit, we basically sit frozen in place. We held our breath. We have stress immobility syndrome. Sorry, just like that. And when we do this in, in, in research, here you have someone sitting at the computer, we can record many, much of physiology, but let me just explain. We can record their muscles in their forearm, which is here, the more tension, the higher, or in their neck, the higher. You can look at their heart rate, that's over here, or their breathing, that's over here. I inhale, I exhale. Now you see something very interesting when the person sits at the keyboard. This is common, I would say 95% of you would do this. We have done hundreds of employees at San Francisco State, many other people and many students. One, you sit at your computer station with your, hand, with your hands on your lap, notice. If you do that, the muscle tension is very low. That isn't true for everybody. Some people can sit with their shoulders way up regardless. They're breathing somewhat easily. Now all they do is they bring their hands to the keyboard. And notice, as the hands are on the keyboard, without resting there, and the person will say, I am relaxed, I have no tension. There's usually tension in the forearm, and often in their shoulders, not in this case. And they already start breathing quicker. Now they have to do their typing task, their work performance. Now by definition, the fingers should be moving because they're working, so I have tension. But notice how the shoulders stay up the whole time too. They're not necessary for the task. You know, you would expect some movement now and then, but there is no pause. If you draw lines here, draw a line at the bottom, the muscles never relax. The muscles never relax. The breathing stays rapid the whole time. And then when they finally take a rest at the keyboard, the muscle tension is still high. You know, the distinction probably is that, okay, let me say this. We, we hold this tension because we can stay frozen at the keyboard and we are captured by, this, by the work. It's really different than we, how we used to do data entry with typing, you know, because in typing the task intrinsically had built in movements. You had to hit, you know, for example, as I'll show in the next slide, here's, oh, oops. But that's the model. You probably can see it one more time and then I'll go on. You see, this is really a person who was used to typing, but notice <laughs> she did that arm movement. And then she did the arm movement. She changed the tensions in her muscles, in her arm, forearm. She rotated her body a bit. And so that released the static tensions that tend to build up. Then you would go have to put insert paper. Again, different muscles. Then you would have to get up. All those automatic interruptive movements have been forgotten or have, are now no longer used. To remind yourself then to take breaks. This is a program you can get via IT or just on the web. It's free. I highly recommend it. It's called stretchbreak.com. Just go to the website, you can download this app for free, put it on your computer, and at least it'll guide you for a little stretch break. Ah, it just went, you see? It just did it for me. You could hear it clicking, you don't see it, but it made that noise. So for a moment, just sit forward on your seat. I'm gonna stop sharing for a moment. Just sit forward, roll one shoulder, then the other. And now even bring your hands, tap your head with your fingers to wake yourself up. Then tap on your arms. Tap on your neck. Tap on your stomach, yay! Tap down your legs. Now shake and wiggle. 
I know, imagine how silly you look when you're doing this. And just with a smile, but yet that smile, if you can giggle at our, with ourselves, we already feel better. Keep doing this at least every 20 minutes. Not this specific exercise. I don't care what you do. Put on salsa, dance for a moment. It's unimportant what you do. And so the key is movement. But let me give you the experience for a moment differently. What I'd like you to do as you're sitting, just lift your right knee slightly up so the foot is away from the floor. Just lift it up. So the foot is about, a, you know, an inch away from the floor. Keep holding it. Keep holding it. Keep breathing. Or did you hold your breath? Let go. And I think for many of you, you could feel some discomfort building up. Am I correct? Just nod your head. Notice that was less than 30 seconds. You felt the discomfort. And yet, and that is really what we do when we work at the computer. Without knowing, we, wait, we, are, we lift our finger, holding the mouse, building the tension in our arm. We raise our shoulders. We put our head forward to look at the screen or down, much more commonly at the cell phone. Except I have no idea that these muscles are being held contracted. When muscles contract more than 20%, they cut the blood flow and lymph return by about 80%. And if you don't use your legs, you know, the muscles in your legs are like a second heart to help pump the blood back to the heart. You know, we are really are harming ourselves. So the key is to take many, many breaks and do movement. Remember, these same muscles which got exhausted after 30 seconds or so, when you were lifting the knee, most of you, if you don't have hip or knee problems, can walk for extended periods of time. You activate the muscles, however, you tighten and let them go. So if there's one simple suggestion, implement alternation of movements. The same rule had applied to the eyes. Remember, I look at the screen, now my eyes converge, the lenses accommodate, they constrict. And when I look outside, the eyes can diverge. I look at a far distance and the lens can relax. And I will probably not develop as much myopia or not at all. Let me continue for a moment longer with one or two more slides. So you can see we have ergonomic positions problems. We have gl even glare sometimes. We frown while working. The major key is the person is totally unaware that they're doing this. This man has no idea he's slouching. He has no idea that he's looking like this. He will have neck pain, eye irritation, possibly headaches or even back pain. Or if you do it in the, in the lab, as we have done a number of studies, you can see when the person is sitting at their screen, their head is forward trying to read that Excel file, those small cells, which are hard to read anyway sometimes, or whatever, or cutting and pasting, or the print is too small. I have tension. And yet if I change the ergonomics or the setup, I have much less tension. Look at how the breathing is more rapid. Now he can breathe slower. His neck and shoulder tension is reduced. And just look at what happens to the muscle tensions in your back when you use your cell phone. When you're really looking down, it's an equivalent of 60 pounds applying force, which the muscles have to contract to hold the head up. Doing that the whole day leads to discomfort. I think this is probably the best slide I know of to see. You can see when you slouch it, you all do so easily. Notice how you get problems in the knees. You cut circulation literally. And some people eventually, just like who stand the whole day, may get some slight edema in the legs. There's a compression in the internal organs. The breathing, this area can't move anymore, especially when they're wearing a belt or have some waist constriction. They can only breathe high up in their chest, which will distinctly get a more 
risk of anxieties or other things and many disorders. Then they develop the neck and shoulder tensions. And in this case, obviously, the keyboard is much too high, so they have to lift up their shoulders. If you look at it in another way to say, by going back, you start distorting your nasal and sinus cavities. You apply jaw pressure, strain. You know what, you know, at least these, this should point out, do not sit this way. The question is, what can you do about that? And there are multiple different ways. What can you do? So now in summarizing quickly and then going to specific pieces, you must optimize your ergonomics, which I'll talk about in a moment. You must take breaks. Breathe more in your tummy, slower. Turn off your digital devices when socializing. Block off the time to work productively without interruptions. But most important, respect your evolutionary background. Alternate movement with regeneration. We have to remember that visual cues and auditory cues capture our attention. Turn the screen off 45 minutes go before going to bed. But it isn't just a screen, it's a whole lifestyle. Enhance social connection and support. Do Zoom dinners and gatherings, or be outdoors in the park at some place and meet with people with masks. Eat organic, non-processed foods. It does help the immune system because our highly processed foods tend to cause an inflammatory diet and makes people more at risk for diabetes and, and obesity and COVID. Learn stress management, take holistic health classes, go outside in nature and, and take cl RPT classes. That's the ad for the program. But let's just feel how our head and neck are connected. For a moment, I'm gonna just turn this off a little bit. We want to feel those connections. Put your hands right in your neck, just like this. Let the fingers just float on the neck. And as you're doing that, to be sure your shoulders are fairly relaxed. And now I'd like you to look fairly rapidly with your eyes to the extreme right and then to the extreme left, back and forth, quickly. Good enough. How many of you held your breath? How many of you could feel the muscle tension in the neck? Yes? Did you notice the muscle tension when you moved your eyes or not? Do it again then. Just check, let the fingers float on the cervical area, just like this. And now just look to the extreme right and you'll feel that the right neck tightens. Look to the extreme left, your left neck seems to tighten. Can you feel that? Except we are totally unaware that happens. We also did not blink usually and we held our breath. So, you know, so how can we solve those problems? One, to remember we do this. Two, blink many times while working. It's critical. And three, just feel the difference experience when you're looking at the screen right now. As you're sitting at the screen, gently let your eyes close and note the different ways by which you can experience the world. In a moment, with your eyes closed, I like to gasp, take a quick breath, almost like surprise or fear, and open your eyes wide to look at the screen. Ah, it's a new notification. Ready, get set, go. I want to really check it out. Is that right? Is that right? Keep doing that. Check it out that it's correct. Notice your eyes are bigger almost and they're getting drier. You really forget to blink. Now, do I know it's an exaggeration, but it's really what happens. Now do the opposite. Close your eyes. There's nothing wrong. My world is safe. I feel lucky. And now what I'd like you to do is just to inhale into your stomach and then gently as you exhale halfway through the exhalation very softly let your lids just come up and as if you're looking slightly down like you don't care too much so i'll do it again as if i let my jaw go slack at the same time and when i do that do any of you notice your eyes felt more relaxed and different 
Some of you can almost feel slight tearing occurring in the eyes. So the eyes are less dry. These are just gimmicks, but they're very useful. So in a summary for eyes and neck, do a lot of shoulder and neck movements. Enjoy. Blink many times. Each time you hit, you search, you click, blink, click, blink. Close, you know, and then do the eye closure, like I said, and let your eyes open while you're exhaling at a very slow rate. It will relax the eyes much more. Okay. Now, let me do a few comments about ergonomics, because those are critical. And so I'll shift to the screen for an instant. So remember, when you think of ergonomics, it is the foundation. Remember, if you get a chair which is ergonomically adjusted for you, you have the opportunity to sit correctly. It doesn't mean you will. In a correct adjusted chair, I can still collapse. I can still raise my shoulders. However, it offers to provides the opportunity. On the other hand, if your chair is incorrect, and that's only it, then there's no way to sit correctly and you have to compensate and adapt. You have to put other pillows around or something. So it's much harder to, opt to stay healthy. It's almost the, the way I thought about this, like shoes, you know? If the ergonomics is correct, the size is correct. But if the shoes are too big or too large, it doesn't work. You see, here you can see it. Here, the, the, ergonomic, the ergonomic arrangement can be correct. The person could sit like on the right side or they can still sit collapsed. So it's more than just the ergonomics. But let me just show a few pieces on ergonomics. For many of us, the keyboard can be too high. If the keyboard is too high, we tend to raise our shoulders as we measure here with muscle tension. When the keyboard is at the right height, we have much less shoulder tension. Think of the keyboard height being at the level when your arms are along the side of your body. You bring your hands up, your, your forearms level to your thighs. That's the height for your uh, keyboard. Or what I'm doing on my table, I, do, I sit at the table, I let my whole forearms rest on the table and my keyboard is midway on the table. That's a very easy way to do it. But I'm, I'm going to skip this on ergonomics. But for arrangement of laptops, which so many of us are now using at home, it is a challenge, a true challenge. You know, the laptop is really difficult because if I work on a table, most likely the table is already slightly too high. That means I tend to raise my shoulders a little bit. And then I need to look down at the screen and notice the, the flexing and the bending. How to solve that? There's really two solutions and they both cost some money, not too much. One, get an external keyboard, just like I have here. If you can, maybe I can, here you see it, because I'm using a laptop. I use this keyboard, I plug it into the laptop or by Bluetooth. And now I can put the keyboard at the right height and now I put a box underneath my laptop so my laptop screen is at the right height for my eyebrows. To the top of the screen is at my eyebrow level. So now I can just look straight out. That's solution one. Solution two, I spend a tiny bit more money because keyboards are quite economical, uh, is to get a second screen, get a larger screen and then plug it into the laptop and now you can use the keyboard of the laptop at the right height to look at the screen. I have another question. So it's uh, from Serena. Is it unusual that sitting straight actually gets tiring for me, leading me too much, too, leading me too hunched over? Absolutely. If you sit perfectly straight, you cannot sit like that. Our bodies are not designed to be rigid. When we sit straight, we increase the disc pressure more and more. As gravity pushes down, we increase it. It gets very uncomfortable. So the key in a way in sitting is to do lots of alterations. That's one. 
Two, it helps, which I do, is, and I'll show that, I can put a little support in my back, mid-back, so I can almost lean against it. It takes the strain out. I, in my situation, I work on a table, which you cannot see at this moment. My stomach is near the edge of the table. My, I rest my arms. I'm almost leaning slightly back. And my arms, my forearms are resting on the table. My keyboard is at least, uh, I would say, almost 16 inches away from my stomach or more. And I can look straight at the screen. That works. That's how many people will work. I would recommend working. But you cannot do that if you just have the laptop by itself. And here you can see it. You hear your, your, if the ergonomics is incorrect, this is too small, this person is too big. It doesn't work. Ergonomics means appropriate for the person. This is more a setting. I don't know many people who work like this at home. Normally people probably would bring, imagine this having a very wide table, wide table, bring this laptop way over to here then the keyboard can move over and the person can just gently rest their forearms on the table to work. That often works much better for people. And then sit up straight. The question you raise, but sitting up straight is challenging. Put a pillow in your lower back. I would also recommend this for people watching television or screens while watching videos because this is how we tend to sit on the couch, maybe even more slouched than forward. I recommend putting a little pillow here because when you sit like this, your breathing is compromised and you tend to lose energy and it's harder. It's just harder to feel good. Here's an alternative. Again, I don't recommend, here's how you would sit. You can see slow the spine getting in problems. Here the person uses a seat insert, a twist. So now she can sit more easily up. However, this is a disaster because she has to really look down to the screen. Ideally, she should have a second screen at this far corner. And here you can see my setup. Now you can see what I talked about. I have adjusted my world. It's a fairly cheap chair, honest. And this is even cheaper, my, my stool. And notice what I have done. I have a mouse. I used this one, I used the keyboard of my computer to key on. But look how far in a way my arms can rest on the tabletop when I work. And then I have a next second screen, which is equally useful. This screen is, re I, it's, it's just the angle the way it is taken, it's slightly higher. And I'm very lucky that I will change position. So now here I am standing and doing the same work. So I alternate between sitting and standing. And we so often forget to breathe. So this is the final piece I wanna talk about for one more, three more minutes. And then when we collapse, we really put a girdle on ourselves. We don't realize that on that previous slide. And we develop the same symptoms as so many women did in the turn of the century called neurasthemia. We have fatigue, anxiety, headaches, heart palpitations. Partly because their abdomen was so constricted and they had to breathe so high. So when you're working at the computer, give space for your abdomen to expand, maybe as shown on the left here. Notice when you inhale, your stomach can get bigger. But if your waist is too constricted, it can't do that. You can only breathe way on top. So here would be the other way of drawing it. When you inhale, you don't want to do it this way or breathe. You want to breathe like this. Notice when the person inhales, their stomach gets bigger like this and not like this. I'm going to skip these. And finally, slouching affects many other things, your mood, etc. When we slouch and collapse, it's hard to think. It's hard to do abstract thinking. When you slouch, you get negative, you have more access to negative thoughts in our studies. It's hard to think positively. Just for a moment, as you've been sitting much too long, really sit way up. Really, for a moment, stretch way up, look up, and for a moment, just think of a very positive image and breathe. Think of an, a happy memory. So I was sitting like this. Now what I do is I take a breath. I look up. 
Think of a positive image, a memory, a, day, a reverie. Keep breathing, let your eyes close and just be in that place for a moment. And then just let go and relax. Okay. Finally, finally, I notice that I don't remember to stop to to stop my slouching. I do it automatically because I get so caught in the material. And for what I now do is I use a device on the back of my neck many times. That's called an upright, which runs on my cell phone. And when I put it on there, whenever I collapse, it vibrates. It reminds me, sit up straight. So then I, so I automatically get feedback to do it. Something like that. Reminders are most useful to use. And when you do that, as our students would report who did the studies, they start feeling better after three weeks and they have less aches and pains. The final recommendations, I'll end. Remember to reduce exhaustion. Do look at your ergonomics. Think of starting with your feet on the floor, that they are stable, then sitting, and then being able to bring your hands to a keyboard or to your cell phone. And when you use a cell phone, is it possible to put your arm on an object so hold it up more or use a stand? Do not, well, let's say it differently, as much as possible, keep the digital devices away from your body to avoid electromagnetic uh, radiation. I think, I personally think is harmful. Really become aware of your muscle tension. Assume without knowing or awareness that you're probably of tension. Just check it out. If you've been looking for a while, just stop for a moment, drop your shoulders. You may notice they dropped. Practice stress management and especially lots of breathing. Do lots of movements and regenerations. Schedule time without interruptions to work and to play. Take care of vision. Look at the distance and do a technique called palming. Do fitness and avoid screens at night. And have lots of social connections while respecting your evolutionary past. And as I look at the clock for some resources at San Francisco State, San Francisco State's Enterprise Risk Management, it's a great website. There's some great presentations on ergonomics and recommendations. Highly recommend it. Go there. Click on it. Use all their information. It's superb. Download the free Stretch Break program called stretchbreak.com. It's free. Install the app on your computer. Obviously, for the next ad, that's me, uh, I recommend our new book that will be coming out the 25th. So order it now. So on the 25th, you can just go through this and apply all these pieces in your world. And then we've done a number of blogs on different topics, how to improve ergonomics, strategies to reduce head, neck, shoulder, back, and eye discomfort, as well as digital addiction or the effect of electromagnetic fields. Go to the blog, look, put in the search box, and they'll come up, apply the techniques. I thank you all for staying with me for such a long time.